The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show. With head coach Frankie DeBusk. Brought to you in part by Greenville Federal Bank. Celebrating 50 years serving Greenville and Green County. Your Greenville Light and Power System. Andrew Johnson Bank. Member FDIC. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. And by Creekside Market, with three locations in Greene County. And now, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome into the 2010 Tusculum Pioneer football season. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Brian Staten with the Frankie DeBus Show to be joined by Coach Frankie DeBus here in just moments. Well, the Tusculum Pioneers ended 2009 on somewhat of a high note, winning two of their last three games, but only winning three games for the entire season with true freshman Bo Cordell at the helm, the first true freshman to start at Tusculum College since the inception or the reinstatement of Pioneer football in 1991. Bo Cordell set all sorts of records as far as a national standard is concerned, where he was the all-time freshman passing leader, reestablishing, I guess you could say, the new passing yardage for a freshman at 3,458 yards for one season. Just a few hundred yards shy of what Corey Russell was able to do in 2008 when Corey nearly threw for 4,100 yards. Bo's total was second in South Atlantic, in second in South Atlantic Conference, uh, as far as fourth in the South Atlantic Conference all time, but it was also second in Tusculum College school history just behind Corey Russell. Bo, when you talked with him, said, uh, it doesn't matter about the numbers, I want wins. Well, 2010, somewhat of a different story. Tusculum Pioneers versus Charleston, West Virginia in a series that dates back now three years ago. This would be the fourth meeting. Tusculum won and two all-time against Charleston. That one win came in 2008, the playoff run, when the Pioneers shut them out 40 to nothing. As a matter of fact, the Pioneers during Coach Frankie DeBusk's season and his tenure here at Tusculum are 7-0 in their home openers, including three shutouts during that time. We now welcome in Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk and anxious to get the 2010 season underway. Probably a good way of saying it is more excited than anything, Ryan. After uh, after last year, not not performing the way we all had expectations to perform, it was it was exciting to get the ball rolling. Literally, uh, wasn't sure what we were going to do and how we were going to perform. We had a lot of new faces playing on Saturday afternoon, but uh, the level of excitement, enthusiasm, and all that stuff was there. We just had to go out and play four quarters and, and try to find a way to win. You mentioned Bo Cordell in the open here about how you know as a freshman he said he was scared to death. He threw for some great numbers. He had a lot of great games where he was. Uh, I think he had the top three performances as a Tusculum Pioneer, but he didn't get the results, and that was his main concern when we talked with him early in the summer. Bo is practicing so different. Uh, his composure is so different. It's like he's 25 years old instead of the 18-year-old true freshman he was last year. When, when we started, and we knew going into the, uh, the 09 season that we would have some struggles with the true freshman quarterback, but he really got better as the season went along, finally started maturing there toward the end of the year. That's why we were able to win two of our last three ball games, and, and then Saturday, uh, it, it'll show here when we watch our highlights, but Bo just played uh, so much different than he has, and uh, still did not play like we hope he will eventually, even though he goes, what, 31 of 43, mm -hmm. and uh, made a lot of good decisions, and Best thing about him Saturday was he got rid of the football. We didn't take any sacks. Uh, he knew what to do with it when it was covered. He would run it and get some positive yards. And, uh, those are the things that kept us in the ball game and, and really made a difference Saturday afternoon. Big, big turn from last year to even this year, the fact about your defense. Uh, I think rushing was, was atrocious last year. Uh, I don't think that's always your fault. I, I believe uh, you know, a lot of that has to do with scheming against you. But the defense has to be better this year. We're better, period, after watching uh, the first game on Saturday. We just, we're, we're a little older at some key positions. We have some new players at some other positions that are really helping us out. Uh, we're bigger, we're stronger, and, and our scheme is helping us. You know, we're going back to doing things we used to a few years back. And not that what we did last couple years was a bad scheme, it just didn't fit our personnel. And uh, our personnel is athletic, quick, uh, maybe not as big as we'd want to be. And, and it, it really what we're doing now is fitting our, our personnel as much as scheme. Well, the Tusculum Pioneers take on the Charleston Golden Eagles for game number one. Again, it's the fourth consecutive year that they've played them. This year they are without Durante Hunter, who was an all-world type quarterback for them, especially a year ago when he really hurt the Tusculum Pioneers, not with his arm, but with his legs. The Charleston uh, Golden Eagles with Coach Tony DeMeo run the triple gun option. Let's go ahead and take a look at your first quarter highlights, Tusculum versus Charleston. 
when we take a look at things, Coach, and, uh, you know, as far as just the game set up and just the atmosphere, one of the things that I thought was really neat from here was the pet ban and the fact that we do have some kids back from uh, glory days, such as Kyle Moore. Yeah, you see there's, there's Pat Britts, our South Atlantic Conference Commissioner out there with Jim Boone, and, uh, you know, he, he came to present three of the most prestigious awards within our conference, and Kyle Moore there and his father receiving uh, one of the awards, and there's Jasmine Gunn, uh, our, one of our returning basketball players, thank goodness, with Pat Britts receiving another one of the awards, and I think we'll see Jarrell Naismith here in just a minute receiving the President's Award from the South Atlantic Conference. So, great to have all those kids back on campus. Jarrell's now in med school, and Kyle's still trying to play basketball across seas, and again, Jasmine will be back with us, but uh, it's exciting to see these, uh, these, these kids back on campus and also accept these great accomplishments. You know, and they even said, Patrick Britts broke to me at halftime that Neesmith had become a finalist for the Commissioner's Award um, regionally, so he is one of eight finalists now that will go to a national board. A, a young man who did such great things for the Tuscaloosa Pioneers on, but most definitely off the field as he continues his career, uh, his medical career, at least he hopes, at Lincoln Memorial. And he was joking with Coach Brit with uh, Patrick Britts down there. He said, I don't even want to be here. I I'm so far behind <laughs> studying. Well, let's pick up the game highlights. We have already kicked off. Charleston has kicked off to Tusculum, who went three and out. So the first play from scrimmage for the Charleston Golden Eagles, and it's not like you didn't expect them to run the football, and a little goal, uh, over, uh, end around from Brian Lee goes for 55 yards. Not a good feeling for the head football coach when the first play goes 55 yards, but... Uh, you know, you know, we finally regrouped a little bit and started making some plays. And if you'll see right here, Zach Norman, number 53, is in position to make the play on the on the reverse, just uh, not quite doing what we need to do alignment and assignment-wise and run down the field. Here we got great effort on this. You see there's a couple of defense alignment. There's David Little, one of our starting defense alignment, number 18. There's J.J. Jennings, another starting defense alignment, number 83, giving tremendous effort as we're trying to get him on the ground. And, and after that play, Brian, we got relaxed and – it was a first game, first play jitter, but thank goodness it was over and we were, uh, we were able to respond. Blaine Wilson is a big guy. He's 6'3", 205 pounds. It's his first year as a starter. Last year he did play eight games, threw two passes, and ran for 113 yards. And here's just a simple follow the guy right up the middle. Well, we knew we were going to get some of this quarterback lead and uh, didn't know exactly how much we were going to get, but regrouped on the sidelines and ended up stopping it later as the game went along. But they got a good plan here early. and. Wasn't real sure what their new quarterback was going to bring to us. He is a big kid that we thought we may get a lot, a lot of balls in the air, which we end up getting as the day goes along. And here we're making a stop on the exact same play. And uh, big Fatua Mua at nose guard brings a big uh, weapon inside for us. And, uh, you know, we, we start bringing a little heat there. And there's uh, Boomer Brown, Matthias making a big play for us. <clears throat> Made plays all day long. And I think this is the touchdown run. And Rashawn Harris actually makes a phenomenal hit on their running back. Just... He gets pushed on into the end zone, and, and unfortunately, we're starting with our backs against the wall. You know, Rashawn is a guy last year that played one of those nitro or diamond positions. You moved him to free safety, um, and watching him in practice has really seemed to embrace that role. He's probably the best overall tackler on defense right now, and when you play this particular scheme offensively, you got to have one of your better tacklers running the alley, and that's why we put him there, and, and here you see him flying over there, number 11. And, Sean's from Gaffney, South Carolina, makes a big blow, and I thought we were going to keep him out of the end zone, but unfortunately he ends up uh, getting in. And their kicker misses the extra point, which, again, I, I, those are critical, and, and, and we're only down six to nothing. And what's more impressive is actually how the offense responds in the next series. A young man who only missed uh, two all of last year, Wes Sherrill, and point actors missing his first attempt here. So really a somewhat of an inauspicious start for the Pioneers. Charleston with the big 55-yard run, setting up a – Four-yard touchdown by Lamonte Lattimore, four plays, 73 yards, and took just a minute 45 off of the clock. So the Pioneers getting set to take their next possession, and obviously what you want to do is always, um, I guess, answer. And Deontay Gist is a threat anytime he touches the ball. Yeah, we, we almost scored, uh, especially on the first kickoff first return. He about creeped out of there. And here we're close again. We're just a few few blocks away from, from really bursting that thing and getting something big to happen. And, Again, new faces on kickoff return. A lot of young players playing out there up on the front wall, and uh, they're learning what to do, and we're coaching them on how to do it, and we're going to have to make some personnel changes, people not doing their job, but a lot of it is just strictly learning the college football game, uh, true freshmen uh, all the way down to guys that hadn't played a lot of college football, but we're, we're going to be all right on that team. 
I also have to start to learn new numbers as well. I call Boomer Brown much of the game. Uh, David Little, because he wore 35 last year. Uh, Deontay Gist wearing a new number, number eight from number 21 last year. So some new guys with new numbers. But the Johnny Unitas 19 is Bo Cordell for sure, and that's why he wears the number. And Brian Marshall getting a start here. Uh, Fred Jones missing the first half. And again, you may remember, remember a name in Marcus Foster. You're replacing him this year as well with two guys who really, I think, carried the ball combined 15 times last year. Those two guys are dynamite. You know, you get them to the football, they got a chance of scoring, and Brian Marshall and Freddie Jones, and, and then you throw a little freshman Chad Blakely in the game who got his first college action and got some really big first downs on some third down runs, and really proud of how our kids up front block for them. I mean, you know, we, we do a good job, Pat Aiken and Josh Stone there, from freeing up a, a spot for Brian Marshall to stick his nose up in there. Brian missed last season with a shoulder injury. He was red-shirted. He's from Ottawa High School down there, Chattanooga, and comes in and does a great job and moves some chains. And, Here's our first third down conversion of the year, and it's always good to get that one under your belt and move on. Bo throws it out there to Rashad Carter, and Rashad's from the Atlanta, Georgia area. Uh, just had a great ball game, and, and Bo uh, really gets started in, in doing what we expect him to do. And this was an interesting series. Again, this is the second series for the Pioneers, who already trailed 6 to nothing in the game after Charleston's first possession. It would be the first points that they would give up to Charleston in this series, and then it, there is somewhat of a comfort zone for a quarterback, but it is easy to be a comfort zone. It, Rashad Carter at 6'3", 200 pounds. He's really special. Uh, thank goodness we got him for another year, but uh, he's got a lot of natural ability, a lot of skill, uh, catches the football phenomenal, has the biggest hands on the football team. And the touchdown catch he makes here in just a minute, he's probably the only one on the team that can do that just because of the size of his hands. But uh, again, our, our kids up front, uh, Dustin Moorhead at tackle, protected well. Uh, Hannibal Ruiz at guard made a lot of big blocks, a lot of knockdown blocks. Uh, uh, Hannibal's from, from down the Atlanta area and Moorhead's from, from over at Lincoln County High School in Tennessee. Just, just good football players. and I think that's what's going to show more than anything. We have some young players that are good football players, and that's eventually going to help us in the long run. New to the attack this year, a little bit of a, an option feel for Bo Cordell. First down is what we were hunting here. <laughs> Bo's not... Uh, the most elusive guy, obviously, but he runs it well enough to get first downs on short yardage, and uh, that's what he's able to bring to the table there, and it slowed the defense down a little bit, and uh, he bounces right back and makes another good throw to Rashad, and Rashad breaks a tackle and gets 10 or 12 and moves the chains, and that's what it's all about in a close ball game. Rashad, Rashad Carter for 14 yards. Again, in this series, Carter for 10 yards, Carter for 18, and Carter for 14, and again, this is the wide angle of Rashad Carter, you show that you see the strength. Yeah, he looks skinny. He doesn't look very big, but he he really is a very strong young man. And now, uh, for the pioneers, Bo Cordell and, and Rashad Carter, you have a little bit of a issue with some of the uh, penalties starting to come in. But as far as the, the pioneers are concerned, when you have this type of a threat.